Ruby is checking the amps and setting the whatchamacallit solar panels in direct sunlight for the most possible ampage. It's thrilling. A really handy thing to use when you're setting up your solar panels is a little uh, induction amp meter. So with this guy I can just hook it on to the cable itself leading from the solar panel and then kind of move the solar panel around till we get the most amps we can out of it. We set it to zero and when we hook it on we're getting about an amp with me casting a big shadow on the solar panel. And then if I move away we get 2.6, almost two and three quarter, close to three. And then if I move back over the solar panel, cast a big shadow, it goes right down. So this lets me get it set so that we can get the most power out of each of our panels. With all the panels set up in their optimum position, really early in the morning, it's still 10 o'clock, we're only getting eight amps, or almost eight amps out of them. So you get each one set individually, and then you come in to make sure that the total is where it should be. And that is the daily dance we do throughout the day to get the solar panels set to the perfect place that way we can charge the batteries up as best we can each day. We decided to get showers today. So to do that, we're going to put rainwater into our little shower heater thing. Yes, we covered that thing with black Batman tape so that it would heat up in the sun and we could get hot showers on board. So we're just filling it up and then we'll set it out in the sun and let it just roast away. And then this afternoon we get a nice hot shower that's solar heated so it doesn't draw on our batteries. Except for filling it. <laughs> Maybe Morty will get a shower too. Maybe. <laughs> The cheese! Yes. Oh, and a cool thing we did. We save electricity and keep our fridge colder. Is we took windshield sun thingies. And we cover them over the fridge to help reflect infrared. And then we put a big comforter blanket thing. Hold it up and this acts as just another thermal insulator. Yeah, it's fridge. been doing beautifully. Yeah. So at night we can turn the fridge off and by morning we turn it back on and ice cubes are still solid ice. They didn't melt overnight. So. Sweet. Good little tidbit. Yeah. So Today is going to be a cheese day. We have a crap ton of feta and we're going to be eating some brie while we make the feta. <laughs> <laughs> we have here our many stacks of feta cheese. Um, our knife, cutting board, and our giant mason jar. And then the other giant key ingredient is this oil, which we are going to use to fill the mason jar and preserve the cheese. We're also going to be adding some spices and fun things too. But first thing we need to do is cut the cheese into many, many chunks and put them in the mason jar. sit for about three months and it gets amazing 
instead of being kind of crumbly, it goes creamy. And it picks up the spice flavor as well. I have no idea how much to put. Uh, as much as you want in spiciness. Okay. Those were words. Yes. But they did not make a sentence. <laughs> That's good. to make sure the feta is dry. You don't want it full of water, because then it kind of makes a mess and you have to get the water out after the oil settles. And the really cool thing, you don't need to refrigerate this once it's done. You can put it down in the bilge, let it just stay dark and cool, and sit for months on end. It smells so good, oh my gosh. Just seal it up and let it sit. Just gonna kind of mix it in. Oh, there it goes. You can see the pepper going down. Mm -hmm. Now, one important thing, even though it is technically sealed, the oil will still seep out, so it's important to wrap them in newspaper or a paper towel or something, and, uh, and put them in a bucket, because otherwise you're going to have olive oil in your village. <laughs> All goes well, we should be able to open these in Bermuda. Yay! Now we are going to celebrate our making of the cheese, or preserving of the cheese, with some eating of the cheese. If you hadn't guessed, we really like cheese. into a nice little quiet part of the creek and I'm gonna clean tooth while Morty goes on a little walk. <laughs> I didn't bring shoes but luckily this path is actually kind of soft. Morty is really happy to be able to walk again. Ah, here's a clearing. Let's see if we can see wisdom. Can just see wisdom poking out right over there on the left. <laughs> Morty just chased a bunch of deer. <laughs> there they go. Morty, stop trying to herd the deer! <sighs> Crazy dog. Come on! You are not a forest creature. <laughs> there are two babies, two doves in there. 
Morty. Mama's being very protective. Morty, come on. Morty, ah, uh -uh, no. Morty is tired after his scare. So now we return to the boat. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Hello, Morty. You're a dog. <laughs> hey, boy. Hi. Yes. Hello. Pretty big front is coming at us. And we're currently anchored with two hooks, which means that we will not swing with the wind. So if this thing hits us and is really powerful, it can cause us to actually drag anchors, like both of them. So I'm gonna release our stern anchor. That way, if and when this thing hits us, we'll just swing with it and be fine. explored all these different areas and we just got back after a nice swim and we got a shower out in the cockpit. It was nice and hot. We uh, filled up our water thing earlier today and set it out in the sun so we had a nice hot shower when we got back to the boat and it's just, I'm so relaxed and so happy. And now I'm gonna make dinner. Yeah, so Maddie's gonna make some chicken salad. So it's just all the good things. <laughs> I'm a sucker. <laughs> Can I have a piece? Nope. Oh. Next time on Sailing Wisdom, we raise anchor and have a relaxing, awesome sail towards our next destination. Thanks so much for watching. And we hope that you will like this video and subscribe to our channel for uh, updates on our adventures. And when you subscribe, make sure you click on the little bell. That way you'll get notifications as soon as the next video is uploaded. Thank you so much.